It's right. Continue, continue. The, the crickets will inherit the world, folks. It's not going to be people that think they're free. And it's not going to be people that don't contribute in any way. Essentially, that's the crickets. I asked, uh, heard uh, here Friday from Breaker's Ball. Actually, pretty astonished. I'm not quite sure what to feel about this, if I feel anything. In a way, it's kind of being numb. Heard from Grimner last Friday that there, he doesn't have the money to run the, the network, pay the hosting fees that are due this month, I found out. And so we have this little thing going on here every February, shortest month of the year, generally, make the pain as limited as possible for donations. And last week I asked for a few donations to bring us up. And I think we need around 500 bucks. I don't know, roughly there. It seems to be pretty consistent. And uh, he told me, uh, if you will, told everybody on the Freakers broadcast that he had only received one donation as of Friday. I've confirmed that that was the case today. And when I heard that, I just almost didn't hear, couldn't believe I, I, I was hearing what I heard because last year, yeah, it's a slow roll up. Yeah, you, you donate as you will, but, and it, but the first week we at least started to see a progress toward the fulfillment of getting the server, the hosting server at least paid. And there's more bills past February, but if it all comes in in February, he catches all that up. And I just a little bit astonished that there was only one, and thank you to the donator, uh, only one donation that came in. Like I said, I don't even know what to think about this. I don't know why I, you know, it's all these questions start coming into my mind. If you don't want censorship, why don't you support those that are speaking out? If you don't support those that are speaking out, then why do you complain about censorship? It's always this duality I see in people uh, that just don't follow through with their, with their, what they, their words say. Again, remember, you know all the occupiers by their deeds, not by their words. And so in some regard, I'm not surprised in a way. I mean, I can't even get people to, and not, not to those people that do click the uh, thumbs up. What a little price to pay every day to let other people know that there's something going on. Even a thumbs down, which I would ask you to do the comments. I, I, it doesn't matter. Interact. You can't even, most of you can't even do that. And so I don't have much of an expectation almost all the time. And yet, I think we have it in us. And so I keep, and I see that there's a few of us that I see work that do do make these things change back to where they're back into what we need. We do bring that, the, the what we think is free back onto us. And we I show you the thing that you are trying to complain about is really, in a way, not there. But it's not there in the way that it's zero there. It's there in a way that if you if you understand how to tell it off, if you will, tell it its limits and show those limits, then you'll be able to do most of what I talk to you about in lots of subject matters. And so I, I don't know, really, uh, I'm sitting here wondering what's up. I, it, it, listen, I mean, we, can we, do I have to talk? I, I guess I should. I, I guess it need, we need to talk at the base child level, do we? Can we go, do we go through the common core math? Or do I, you want me to go through the, do I have to go down and bring my calculator out and explain that if, if just the people that went to the website, just went to the website, don't even listen to this broadcast, would just to put in $7, which sounds a lot like more than what I was thinking earlier, $7, we would pay for the hosting fees for a year. I wouldn't have to be asking you here, which is a, a feeling a bit of an insult as well. So I see like a lot of failure in people, and I see lots of complaints at the same time, and that's not congruous. That's not a, a state of a, men, a healthy mental facility. And I, I understand that, I, you know, I may have been optimistic two steps back. Uh, the more I look around to see what's going on, we, we, we are maybe four, maybe five steps back if we have steps to take. And anyway, I'm feeling a little irritated. The more I talk about this, I feel irritated because I'm not a money guy. I've been told, in fact, with the Jefferson Money District, don't worry about the money. It'll be there when we need it. And you know, it has. So I just, I've been able to just not worry about fulfilling something when someone else is committed to going ahead and fulfilling that part for me. Otherwise, I think about it, and it usually slows me up. And it's kind of the same way here. And I appreciate everything that's been going on in the past. I've been here at this network for many years. Grimner's had this site up for many years as well, over a decade, I'm sure. Well, I don't even know, 15, 16 years, I don't know. 
long time. And you all have filled in to uh, stepped up to, to make that fulfillment. To hear only one donated last week and there wasn't, and he doesn't have the money to, to pick it up, it was a little bit startling to me. Now here's the other problem, and I double checked with this. This may be the last broadcast, literally, because I just found out the server fees are up next Sunday. Could very well be the earlier in the day. And so here we are. The rubber meets the road this week. We don't have the run up. We don't have anything going on that we can man, you know, see that maybe people are kind of rolling in on. If you expect to hear this voice, literally, I don't, maybe next week, maybe not. But as he told me this morning, it's due on the 16th. And I asked him, is it before noon o'clock or after? He didn't know. Well, I'm going to go with the earlier because then in case we lose the server, then uh, you'll know why. And I don't know. What, how much do I harp upon this? How much do I explain that it literally, if you were to take everybody that clicks on the links in all the various places, you'll end up hearing this broadcast this week, in just the places I put that. If everybody who just listened, even for a few seconds, and appreciated that few seconds, whether you not you, you you fully believe or not in all of it, it doesn't matter to me. If you're appreciative of the fact that it's here, that you want to pay, be a contribution toward having a, the voice uh, that a voice and I mean all the hosts here just whatever they want to present here that devote their time and Grimner devoting the website everybody that clicks on my uh, postings alone that I post after the broadcast in all the places I do and not all of them I can't get to them all it's almost overwhelming it is overwhelming if I would just get a dollar from every one of those clicks to to Grimner on the real liberty media donation page or button we would pay for this thing and I wouldn't have to be sitting here wondering about how I feel about all this and wanting to stop talking about it because why should I have to talk about it, really? And yet, I'm, this is not a joke. We live on a shoestring, if you will. The This hot dog stand, uh, I was told, this hot dog stand rolls up next week because there's just no no encouragement, no financial support. To, to pay, pay for the server. The, the biggest server fee comes up in the 16th. There's some that come after. That's, I don't know if you understand how this works. There's lots of, uh, there's lots of different things and services that are required that attach to the website, like, let's say, Shoutcast and all that other thing. Grammy Mary picks up the, the streaker. People are doing donations. It's not like we don't have the help, and I really do appreciate all that. But, the majority of the load comes from the people that listen, or ought to, I think. And I was a little bit shocked. I didn't realize that there was just no money to go toward the service. Sometimes we do. The, uh, I think I've heard that Grimner was was gracious enough to advance the money before it came in. I think that's usually how it's worked. But I was just shocked that only one uh, happened. And I'm looking now from Grimner. A shout out to uh, Donna uh, for the twenty-five dollar donation. I I do appreciate that and all that. Again, all the support, whatever it comes, it's it's fine, it's great. But there are certain things. I look around, and the people that I, if I can say fight, we, it's not really a fight. I, we do a different thing. We have an invader, but we we defeat them in ways that's not really a fight. I say don't make a fight. You you go after these people with the with the foundation of the law, and they are not in law, and you're pretty well done. You just got to get people, Americans, to 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 believe it it's just amazing what i see going on uh, the in fact you know the virginia constitution really keeps coming back in my mind it's so cut and dried about how that lays out i actually can now as i think about it more i can actually take the format of that and i can apply it in lots of other areas just lay out there's a cause written right in that in every maladministration of every government every state you can take the virginia constitution their article what was it for and you could work that out. You solve the core maladministration, and you can bring forward anything that you want. Uh, as far as the law that I keep telling you, that's what you have to change now. The lunatics have grabbed the tiller of the ship of state, folks. I don't know what to tell you about that. You live in a place that has the rules and laws, and you don't live other places. And those that have the rules and laws, whether we want to agree to it or the voluntarianism part of it, you volunteer by being here and not throwing it off if it's an occupation. That's not my rules. And so um, I'm looking at Grimner's uh, through the uh, chat, which I usually don't do. I really can't focus on the chat. It's anyway. I've talked about all that. Uh, Grimner's telling us, telling me now he's gotten 75. Uh, I guess since Friday now, or maybe that was the two. Um, 
but he's going to need like oh, almost 250 bucks here next week, folks. I mean, this is not a. I didn't. I thought it was near to the end. It's actually in the middle of the month. And so I, I guess I'm. And what else do I say? I, I'm asking. Do I plead? I don't. Do I have a fundathon here? I mean, this is what I got to do. I was actually thinking about that. Thinking I'll just make one more broadcast, and then if there's no donations, I'll just do a fundathon. I'll talk to you. I'll harp on you for the funds to get to RLM for one whole broadcast and see if that doesn't, because the next week would have been the last that we've been over. Now, I don't know what it takes all. I do know for most people they have phones. I do uh, believe that that allows you access to the, the Real Liberty Media website. There's a donation button that you can, I don't know what the problem is, is literally putting you know, two or three bucks down. Uh, that's it. That's all it takes. For everyone. Like I said, anybody who listens to this broadcast, I don't care where you listen to it, whether it's BitChute or Minds or um, over even sound minds, thank you over there, and and then the re re reposts over there for normalization of ignorance. Thank you all, and just in case everyone, I saw you come back into minds and give me some thumbs and some promotes. Thank you for that. Just getting the word out. Uh, anybody who listens to this, wherever you might hear that link, have to contribute in because as I was going to say and forgot, moving on to my you know this this insult that keeps coming back, the people that we work against, that work against us, that we tried we stop. They have, they're funded by literally billionaires. This is not even a joke. This is not even unknown. Uh, those like, like Bloomberg. Holy smokes. And yet we continue uh, to, to, it doesn't seem like it. We continue to advance the causes. And I hope behind the woodshed, I'm advancing the way to advance the future. And I don't say that as a hope. I say that as a function, a, a proven function. Now, I know people don't believe me necessarily, and they want to have, they have lots of their own ideas. And I understand. I can see the, that you're talking against yourself when you talk against me and not sit down and apply anything I say to something. And I think people that do that find that it's a little more involved. That it's a little more involved than what you thought was going on. And then you also find out when you refine what, as I say, your work is a load is actually a lot, a lot lighter. It's still work. It's it's a it's an invasion. You're you're fighting the invasion that you don't. That's not apparent to everybody. You you know it. And the only, one of the ways that we get the communication lines out, the intelligence gets out, is through reallibertymedia.com and what Grimner allows for us to plug right in, and then the shoutcast streamers and all the other stuff that goes on that require dollars, the bucks. And it's an interesting philosophy in some regard. If you believe the FRN's joke under and been diminished, well, then it's not costing you but four cents a, a dollar actually to invest. What's your problem? You, you, if you've been listening behind the woodshed, or even the other some of the other hosts, you've been you've been working toward getting to silver money at least, and so it's not a problem for you, is it? But no, see, we don't do that. We complain instead. And so I'm be, again, I feel irritated at some level. I feel just astounded and just almost mouth to the open when I heard that there was no donations that came in. And so I've made, I'm kind of working this into a, it's now a 15 minute fundathon, isn't it? For that server, just to keep the server for the website up. Okay. So I'm going to ask, and I think I'll move on from here. We need the donations by next week. Otherwise the host server for RLM uh, has no funds to pay for it. What that ends up meaning in the future, I don't know. So that's up to y'all, who are the crickets at this point, relative to the need of being the voice against the oppression and all the things that you hear and all the things that you complain about. And if that's if, if the zero donations is a reflection on what I'm doing, and I know where the source of what I'm doing is as far as what we do and it works, then I think maybe that's the answer too. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe as I open the broadcast, the crickets will inherit the world, not the earth. Remember, you're in the world, not of it. You're going to be of it, because you really don't want to. You really don't want to step up in any capacity. And so then, then, then there's an extension here that goes on to all the other sites that are posting this, if you will, like UCY.TV. I'm not sure what Jules needs there. She pays for the website that people still go to. And I think I'm live today, even though there's a, I'm the ghost in the machine. And I think Sholly might be every once in a while. Sholly, yeah. Every once in a while. And so this is the, this is the problem. We've got people that are willing 
and then, then we don't have the money, or we have the no money, or we have the money, or we have people that just can't keep up, we have health problems, and this is the, the the degradation of whatever you think is a resistance against what you hear is a, a problem. And, and so it, again, I I don't like harping. I just really don't like things about so-called money. It, it shouldn't be a problem. It seems to be. In a way, I have all the faith that you guys, I didn't need to do this. You would just know, but I don't know that you know. This is, it actually surprised me this comes a little bit sooner in the month than the end that the host ser, host ser, hosting server needs to be paid. And so, to put the bottom line on this, for those of you that listen routinely, I'd ask for whatever you can contribute up to, you know, even 10 bucks would be great. More? Hundred dollars? Great. Again, the more people that do the higher, then the less that have to come in. But that's the, there's nobody yet coming in with anything big that offset that. If we just use, use the rudimentary numbers, just the people that listen to the the RLM, uh, it's going to be a little bit over seven dollars a donation of all of you, each one of you that clicks in here. Anybody that comes from outside and we get a bigger population, we kind of do the SARS virus here in a way, don't we? Then the numbers and percentages, for what each one has to contribute, goes down. And I figured about three dollars each would be uh, from everybody would uh, would would do this thing real quickly, and I think that's pretty painless. I don't know. Some of us may not have access, but there's I'm sure other ways to to help support the counter to censorship, the counter to stifling, uh, the counter to uh, ignorance, the counter to misinformation, the counter to the semantic world, the counter to the in, the future that someone else wants for you. And, and and so I, I guess I'll stop here uh, again. Thanks to all those that have donated, uh, that do the routine donations. Those are kind of unsung heroes. In fact, I'm looking up. See, Vine has been you know Vin, Vince easily. He's been putting in now. Uh, again, uh, it continues the cost. There's, there's and that again as I was saying that we just got the that's just the servers and the the streaming and all the digital side of this. We still got hardware that that Grimner has to routinely replace. In a moment's notice, sometimes it gets done that you all don't have to do anything for. So I'm starting to get irritated again. It's coming as waves. I'm going to move on because I, I, don't, I shouldn't have to talk to you as children. It's not for me to bring you behind the woodshed. It's for you to learn what the woodshed was that you brought the wrongdoer behind for you and solved the problem in the future. And so there's, a, again, the Grimner saying there's no pay, uh, the PayPal account is not required. Uh, you can just use a credit card. I, I don't know how. I'm sure he set up maybe for donations on uh, crypto, digital cryptocurrency, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a way to, to get this done. And I guess this, the shock of one donation for the first week and then no hearing that there's no money to pay for the servers at all was a little bit of a wake-up call in a way that I take a bit. And I don't take it for granted because I know it's always there. I'm always got to, since I guess I don't have it, I think about it a lot, money. The the fact is there's a reality, and we need uh, I would just say 500 bucks in the first the first by next week we need about 300, uh, and the next week we're going to need a couple hundred more. And boy, if I can't see people donating that, then really what are we doing here? What am I? What have I? I always have this question: What am I doing here? It's but for the few of you that really respond and do things, I see you moving along. That really just keeps me into this. But if we can't get the servers against the billionaires. We can't amass a couple nickels here and there each week to to donate in. That's who are we, how are we? Uh, uh, what kind of people are we actually? With all of our complaints, and uh, so I'm going to stop right there. And before I move on further, I forgot again. This is B T W R L M three five six. And as I thought about that, I may not make it to ten uh, the uh, the what the next year at R L M. So. Uh, how's that? Okay, so again, if I take it as a reflection, I have to laugh, uh, laugh and cry uh, of my work. It's laugh and cry if I can't kick it, get a donation in this place. Then I just want to stop talking right there because what does it matter, really? And I get lost. I don't want to get lost in that because I've, I've uh, kind of had nothing to. After I got beat down in 2005, pretty good, and life, life got altered for me. There wasn't much to do, and then I kind of moved myself out of the way, and I found a purpose in another thing to continue, and that's what I'm here doing here today. There's not just, if there's really nothing to work for, 
and there's no support for what that work does. And the future, I think, and I would hope you think too, is incumbent on us knowing better how to do better. And uh, I and I think I've been doing that, and that might be the that might be much to my surprise and an overestimation that I haven't actually. Then then what am I continuing for? What do you continue to listen is another way. So anyway, like I said, I go on and on about mulling over the nonsense of this. We shouldn't have a question. We do now. This is no joke. This is, could be the very last week that I'm uh, broadcasting through RLM, and I don't think there's another place I'd be because uh, Grimner was gracious enough to allow me, not that there was much competition, but allow me the time slot I need to do this. Uh, my whole reason why I do Sundays and only on this network is because everybody else w- that I've talked to wants, well, except for one who's just, I think, a, uh, one <laughs> one network I think is a shady network at any rate. Uh, the, but uh, I won't say any of that, but... Uh, uh, let's say John Stoudemire, he, he wanted me on his network, it was RBN, I think it was. The I just couldn't do every day. Just can't do it. And and so that's that's my my problem, I guess, with not being more than more than I am to get things done. And so here we are, reallibertymedia.com. This is what works for me. If you value what I say and you want to value what it says to the future, because I try to speak there too. We look at the past, we try to bring it forward to the, and then watch the future. They tell us what the future is, but what are we going to do in response? If you think that's valuable, this is the last week. G- given that the servers are up next Sunday and we get some funds, I'll be back. Otherwise, there's no hosting funds and you won't be able to hear me. And so, that's enough. Thank you for those that will donate. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for, again, I'm looking at the chat. I, again, I don't know where it is, and I'm seeing Grimner telling me thank you. And thank you, Veronica. That's over at Sound Minds, you two being simulcast together. Thank you for all the support over there, too, and, and your and your intention to move forward better. And Not that I'm focused on the peaceful part, but you know that's the mindset you step into. So thank you, Veronica. Thank you, uh, all you guys over there at Sound Minds and anywhere. Again, uh, anywhere else, I do appreciate in a way, I'm humbled that you listen to me all the time. I don't come here frivolously at all. And I know that, but I don't, you know, it's kind of interesting to, we all only have this life to live, and you happen to spend it with me the time that you do. And again, some people last for a couple hours, and some just last a few seconds, and that's the world, and that's okay. And and, and so, I've said enough, uh, enough times now, it is enough. Let's move on. Oh, let me answer the question first that came. Uh, I don't do this too much, but, uh, and I guess I can use your name. Uh, you put it in the comments of, of, I think, the RLM chat for last broadcast. I think it was last broadcast. Uh, I don't know. The time's kind of weird. Uh, um, my dog, Rex, you, a- you ask a question. Pretty interesting question on the surface of it. And uh, it did cause me to go through some thought back and forth. But, uh, again, that's what you're trying to, I try to beat up a concept here a bit. I've got a little bit more than just to be the answer man as well to try and prove out certain model. If you if I have a model, if I have an application, does that model adjust? And I've said uh, on all this stuff, just to remind you before I get into the question, you always have to find the first step, the foundation step. Where does it begin? Where does this thing begin when you're really when you're talking about land uh, questions on land? In this case, it's an it's an extension of land in a way, and that's what's interesting about this question. But I think. Uh, let me just ask the question now, and then I'll move on. And uh, listen carefully here, and, and think about it. Kind of apply if you, if you kind of put together what I say about how this works with land. You know, we go through your patents and all that, and uh, we've. And I'll use the word. I'll say it now, so you're not unfamiliar. The word allodial uh, is going to come up in the question, and that is essentially referencing English law and kings and what the king. Granted to someone who had land was a lodial title, which was protect actually protected by the king against the king's interest itself. It was, uh, if I can say, it's not a freehold, but, but because it sounds like, see, this word free and any attachments, not a subfix, is not really good. But for people's minds, it's a, it's a freeholding of of land against an interest, a foreign interest, and protected by by the, if you will, the jurisdiction, the border within that jurisdiction. And so that's what a low deal in, in rough paraphrase says. And uh, so this is a question that my dog Rex asked. How if a low deal applies to land, parenthetically earth, 
and man is created or made out of land, is man not allodial? Now, first glimpse, that's a pretty, pretty interesting question. Uh, but then I have to apply what I do uh, normally to, to property c discussions. And we imply here, I guess, that the, you're trying to find, and this is one of the problems that we have, we assume that, that there's this overpressing thing that we're looking to be free of. The allodial, that my dog Rex knows what allodial is. It's free from any uh, subjugation and uh, relative to a king or any other sovereign, sovereign, if you will. So we're implying that the answer is trying to find how you're not subject to an oppression, essentially. And so that's an interesting problem in its own. But let me get to the question again. If allodial applies to land and man is created or made out of land, is man not allodial? So we have two points here, two jurisdictions. And this is how I want to show you how we approach this. You may agree with my, my, uh, my analysis here in a short in summary, as it will be without any further input, or you can agree, or you can question and go find your own uh, uh, treat, your own research to qualify one way or the other, or different. And so uh, this is what I came to in a kind of a quick uh, beating up, if you will, of all the things I could come up with that, uh, let's go back to the first question is, is, what jurisdiction are you talking about? And so we have an interesting uh, co um, com combination going on that depending on your viewpoint will depend on your answer. And so first off, let me just negate the question as an improper question because the term allodial is not applicable to the creator. The term allodial has to do with man-made laws. It's uh, If we go to the Declaration of, uh, Declaration of Independence, it's not nature's God. That's man-made. Elodial is man-made. So the, the question is improper relative to what it's asking. We can't apply elodial to the subject matter of man made of mud, right? In that jurist, in the jurisdiction of, uh, we'll say I'll just, the Bible, the, those are two different jurisdictions. In fact, there's an answer, a little bit of an answer in there, though an occupier won't recognize it, so you, this is where you've got to get lots of people. There's an, there's an answer inside this jurisdictional point. It has nothing to do with the mud-made man. It has to do with jurisdiction and the extent of man-made law over the, civil, over the creator law and whether or not the, uh, the occupier is recognizing uh, nature's God, and if, you, if I can say it this way. And I speak in hesitance here because lots of people, we get, we're so screwed up about how we uh, use language and what we won't agree with and what we will and and we classify and categorize things into the point where we're, dis we're dysfunctional. We just throw everybody in a, camp, a certain type of camp, and then we don't have to deal with it anymore. But I don't mind integrating some of these ideas and try to proof out uh, and make distinctions relative to whatever you might might feel. There is a fear, uh, and, and this is reflected too, is that we all know you can't actually own the land. And that's another indication too. And this is the thing that we start to watch. What's your jurisdiction? So within the context of the land, the earth, and the creation of the earth, based in the uh, implication that man was made from the soil, the mud, uh, however you want to interpret that, that jurisdiction, allodial, is not, not, not in, can't be imposed. Allodial is a man-made construct. Within the construct of the earth in the biblical sense, no one owns that land. If you go through the book, you'd have to find now what your title uh, is to it and or how, and that's all man-made constructs. But even getting into the, the creation, now let me go to the land. The land, the earth, it sits there. There's no concept about it being, being able to actually be owned. What you have is a civil man-made law that a jurisdiction protects a right in the landed property against everybody else. And that's the trust that I keep telling you about, that government's supposed to be that it's lost its way on, that the mass of people educated were supposed to keep vigilant to not allow to encroach. The point here is the land, because you have land that's allodial, you didn't, don't get that in man's law just because it's land and you necessarily take it unless the jurisdiction, the power that you sit inside will allow it. And so just because... Something is made from a lodial, 
doesn't mean that that item, that produced thing, is a low deal. In fact, it's by definition owned by the creator, doesn't it? That's a producer, too. It relates right on down. So, I don't know if I'm belaboring this too much. The fact that you come from a lodial land doesn't make you a lodial unless, like you see in man-made law, you can find a title that says that you're a lodial within the construct of the Creator's law, not man-made law. And my just to jump to an end here quickly, we have this creation, uh, and I'm not fully agreeing with what I read is accurate, all this stuff, and so I have some major questions here, but... I do see major principles that we work that translate out that I can use, and that's what I'm speaking to, whether I ever will able be able to sit, tell you that or point them out. It's what I'm using. It's consistent between man-made law as it reflects maybe what the, any men may have interpreted was the creator's intention, which we're not supposed, we really can't know. Uh, but the, you would have to find, like, the land, the literal land that we live in, the, the earth, you don't just get something elodial. There's a document that that gives you a certain title which the power is going to protect in you, or supposedly. And without that, you have this tyranny and you don't have a property. You won't even have yourself as property. And this is what this question implies. Do we have property in ourselves? Now, I've explained how you can say that you do, but it has nothing to do with the fact that you come from, from an elodial source. Because the creator it really is the creator of that product is really the sovereign in that capacity. So you have to find the documentary proof that you have a lodial ownership of yourself. And I'm not sure, jumping to the end, I'm not sure that's possible in the construct of the Bible. You're subject to a judgment. And so there's no lodial ship there. So what we're now, let's look, okay, so I don't, just on the surface, no, the lodial's not applicable, and no, you're not a lodial because you're a creation, that's subject to a judgment and protected by that jurisdiction, ultimately, if you follow the right, correct, narrow path to the right end, make the right choices, which is, I've got problems with all this, but it's okay. We'll just move it down. I'm going to be having lots of questions, all I can tell you, but at any rate. So now let's move inside where a low deal is applicable. But you still have to have a document, and you still have to issue by the power that has the power to issue that document, to give you protection over yourself. And so that becomes a little different approach. And now we got also got to be careful because it's it's an interesting problem. You have the man that was formed out of the mud and then you have the civil man, civil person because law, man's laws are attached which in a way on of the world you need uh, or in the world not of the world, but in the world, you need in order to protect you from things like Genghis Khan, which is what exactly they've created in stakeholders uh, to make it look like their benefits uh, is what's needed in the world and the uh, trespassers can come onto your, your way of life and they don't have a right, but they look like it. Uh, so Lodial cannot be applied to the creator. It can only be applied within a civil jurisdiction, man-made law. And within that context, you then look for the admissions within the governmental structures that you have sovereignty over that more than a lodial ship. Uh, that you're subject to a creator it means you're not sovereign in that regard. But are you sovereign with respect to any man-made establishment? Let's go to Virginia's Constitution. It clearly says that you are and you have inherent rights. So this, this question is, I think, misformed and it's misapplied. And it depends on the context whether or not, uh, the question is, am I, am I in my own property? I would say you are, but it's not because you're formed of the earth. That, that actually pulls you into being a subject, but in the context of that thing, that creation. I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. In fact, given what I see, given it's not a big old ruse what we're seeing, that's not a bad thing at all. You just have to learn, if you will, to rise above all this man-made stuff and start living in in the uh, the higher perspective, I guess, because we're we're going to be bound here for for as long as we're alive. So I don't know if that's answering the question that you would accept. A low deal is not applicable to the creator. That's man-made. Applying man-made, then you have the the example of how you would prove whether or not you'll a low deal relative to 
but to others with the land now. See, this is the problem. Because now you're not talking about the people. And then you're trying almost to, to apply yourself to something that a government has power over. So you've got to be careful on how, again, the jurisdiction divides it. And so that's always important to identify the jurisdiction first in which you're discussing or from which or um, about which, outside of, that you're discussing. And why, I, I think I said it last week, that was the problem. And this, again, this is not to degrade anybody or to judge them. This is just the way we do things. Like I was talking to Larkin Rose. He jumps on authority. And I look at, I find, finally clicked on, because there's something in my mind going, wait a minute, there's something not right. He sounds right. He sounds good. He sounds like, you know, he, I know he's a right-hearted guy. It's, it's, but it's not about that either. It's looking at, well, what's the, what's the hitch and the giddy-up? And I told you, you don't find authority first. You find jurisdiction. Or, or not. I mean, I guess you work either side. See, it depends on how you approach the so-called problem and what you allow. It's easy to say, yeah, I'm from the lodial earth and this and that. Well, that's a different jurisdiction. It's not about the mud. And within that jurisdiction, you're not a lodial. And if you thought you were, you'd have to be able to create the earth and you'd have, or something like it or some of the mud and create yourself and, and then be immortal, essentially, on your own. In perpetuity, as we see man-made reflection in these so-called governments that are only as, as long-winded as, as we people allow them or the next horde comes in to take down. And so I, I hope I don't I didn't confuse that. Uh, jurisdiction is important. A low deal is not applicable to the creator's jurisdiction, only to the man-made jurisdiction within that context and within the proper functioning of a government that honors that. Then the holder it has the land a low deal lee, but that's not applicable to the man. That's a different analysis. Relative to the creator and that the man-made jurisdiction doesn't apply is a very subtle discussion. And then you'd have to get back into how are you not participating in the jurisdiction that's applying the standard. Why I say you can't really not, not understand the powers that be within the structure. And if you do, you're going to fall short, way short there of a dealing with it. You live in a place, it has a, a form, it has a function. Well, they work on the form, they don't work on the function, it's up to us to keep the function. And within that context, it's not really a question whether or not you're a lodial that way. It's whether or not you understand your status within that construction and your relationship to that status, um, excuse me, that f establishment. And I'm thinking here, just to let you, the Virginia Constitution lays that out really nice and clear in four sections. It's really uh, kind of neat. I never I hadn't thought about it until I hit that so-called 2A issue. And so, if, uh, okay, I don't know what else to say. There's so much that I could uh, work through and chew on, but I don't think it gets us any further than uh, than what came to my mind as I've already said, deal with jurisdictions and then, then try to apply the, the elements of those que of that question, you'll find out some way, you have to apply those terms where they would apply and in the, they won't apply in one, in the jurisdiction that the implication of being formed from the earth is stated but in the man-made side, it, you're not a formed earth, you're actually dealing with the earth, which is the only thing that a power can protect in you against all others, to the, its limits to protect you. So it's all a big question at that point, isn't it? And that's why it ends up taking the mass of, of focused energy uh, to keep it, uh, you know, keep the intention. I mean, this is almost spiritual in a way as well. You've got to keep your intention pure. And when you dissolve it, it, when you think about other things, when you're divided in yourself, when you're divided amongst others, and you're supposed to be whole, the, the house divided cannot stand. How many more biblical references do I need to bring up? that are wise references that are truth. They work. That's how it works. Like the the, the Pharisees and whatever, they were going to hid the key of knowledge, and those that entered, uh, they hindered. I, I know that perfectly. You know, that's your complaint, part of your complaint. Yet you don't throw out these people that are the Pharisees of the day, that hide the key, key of knowledge of justice and, and obstruct those that, uh, that do find it and, and try to make justice. You know, in a world that is not given to us at this time, given that that jurisdiction, it's given over to another. 
at this time. And so I'm not a biblical scholar here. I'm just trying to take principles and apply them because I certainly have plenty of questions. And in a way, I don't have any questions at all. I just There's just a thing that's going to happen if it's laid out the way it is. That it will just, just, it's not that we can be complacent and have a martini somewhere and chill, but the things are going to roll out. And we still have the job of maintaining the best of the intention, not allowing it to go and not letting or reminding others not to slip into the stinking abyss. And then this is the idea of not not being of the world, even though you're in the world. And so there's lots of principles here we can apply. I don't get too wrapped up in it. I certainly won't do it on the broadcast. And I do a lot less of conversation, even face to face. It's There's just some realities you start knowing that are applicable and some that aren't. And, you know, we said we have a work and we have a faith. That's my question. That's where the faith has to come in. It's like, I have faith. You all will step up and uh, do the donation. I mean, I don't know what else to do. And if you don't, then that's a direction. That's a truth, too. Whatever I want, whatever I feel, and this is the kind of decisions that you make when you're, you're looking out. And I, that's why I say let's reduce this down to do you engage with all your might to stop oppression in the world, or do you not? Do you give it lip service? And getting back, okay, I want to focus back on the question, if allodial applies to land, and man is created made of land, is man not allodial, not applicable in allodial? And if you are going to go down that track in that, in that jurisdiction, you have to find in a recognized objective document your title to your allodial nature within that jurisdiction. Men are not considered allodial. They're not really considered by the government because they're supposed to be the sovereign, aren't they? And so, again, it's, mis- it's just a misplaced. It's not, not a judgment here. Just a, be careful to not create questions. It sounds really cool, but be careful not to walk yourself into questions that are not actual questions in a way. And that's why I say be careful. I guess my first rule is be, make sure you have a good, you have a real valid question or more importantly, try not to walk into something with an issue that you hand into somebody to discuss. So uh, I hope I've I hope I've cleared, um, stated my position for that. You can do the analysis. Thank you, my dog Rex, for that. Uh, I thought it was an interesting question. It did cause me to go through quite a bit of discussion because, again, depending on what direction you're looking, will depend on what you have to apply. And in a way, that's a good exercise, too, because then you have to start overcoming your own prejudice of what you think and get back to the fundamental foundation of how you apply the the basic, the pro- make the proper application of the principle. So let's move from, if we own ourselves, uh, and you, you have to have that sense of ownership in yourself anyway. That's your inherent right. That is not the man-made jurisdiction, is it? That's what we hear. In the, in the Virginia Constitution, the posterity has these inherent rights that the subsequent creation can't, the subsequent establishment can't change in them. Correct? So there's a, there's a, there's an allodial ship in a way, but it's not because that question would lead us to there. And that's the subtle deception that we can lead ourselves into if we want to buy into that question. And so let's move into whether we own ourselves and how we're supposed to protect ourselves. And what information do we use? And behind the woodshed you hear that, you know, pretty much it's, of the world is a deception. We're told that. I don't even know why this is a question. I don't think, know why everything gets down into political terms. And so I've told you before, I made a broadcast of it, that uh, there are going to be those that are actually named that are going to be there to deceive us. And we really have to learn how to discern and move properly through a better intention. And uh, there's every reason why. Those that want to deceive also, well, they, they, the seven deadly sin type things and greed and whatever, they all want all that. The lusts and all this thing, they want to build that up. Don't we see that today? All that stuff. Uh, that they want to also diminish the victims. And so, th- again, as I see these, they call it news. I, I say they're notice, and I then ask us to use the notice in a way, a couple of different ways. One is 
not just to say, ah, there, it proves my point, or you liar, or, oh, I'm going to agree with that. You use it in a in this man-made construct now, the reason why this stuff exists, in the medium of the deceiver, actually. Again, if you think you got a lodial and then you think you're up against you're, you're that, then you start bringing yourself into a commingling of two disparate conditions, not just jurisdictions, but you then bring yourself a menial, meanable to the power of a deceiver. And this is what I kind of lay into the bar association a bit. How easily we're deceived. And we're told that we will be deceived. And we're told that when we figure it out, we're going to be obstructed. And, and so I don't know what the question is at some point. That I don't even know what to say here. That spiritual minds would see clearly and not question where they have to put their energy, I guess I can say. Again, this is a multidimensional thing. But I'm going to move and transition over into how we have to learn to discern. I use the news as notice. It's whether or not you have a subject matter interest. It's whether or not you want to also maybe keep it in mind in order to explain other places. But I like to tend to use what I find in ways to obstruct or even stop or reverse the harm coming upon all of us. Uh, I don't do it myself. I need all of you all. No different than I need you all to donate to reallibertymedia.com. Whatever you can do, a couple bucks a pop here would cover it all. That same thing here, each one of us has a subject matter that we understand. Each one of us has an interest also in something that we can apply. And I look at these news articles, in this case with HPV vaccine, not because it's uh, anti-vax, not because it's a vaccine at all, but when you read through the story, you start to see how we're deceived, and I could, and then I get to see where the failure were was in a system that allowed the deception because it was never called out, and that's my point. Finding that part of the battlefield out and calling out position, and then sending in, sending in uh, you know, rockets to take that position out and being persistent that it happens. And a lot of this requires a lot more people. Uh, you can be effective, but it's uh, to get the actual rollout takes a little bit more. And I'm talking on the mass awareness of those you you can't help. I mean, at some point, they're all they're, their little ones are going to be subject to this deception, and you can be someone who can explain how the deception works. It's still up to them to take it on, but at least they have a better piece of information. And this story is a new study here, explains why it's uncertain if the HPV vaccine even prevents cervical cancer. Again, this is not anti-vaccine. This is not all HPV. See, I told you, this is someone who went in and spent the time to do a study. And there, if you, when you read, and the importance of this paper, this report is what they looked at to try and prove within the studies that did find that they were efficacious, that they worked, that it shows how you can look at a study and it not even say what you think it's saying because there's fundamental steps, foundations missing within the context. And that's what I want to touch on. It's not being anti-vax. It's not being anti-anything, not even anti-pharma if it's going to work. It's going to be whether or not the information we're told in the structure that's made is doing it properly and keeping you safe. And we know that they're not, but we don't have the mechanism to answer to that this starts this study this uh, report here starts to give us the clues on line item by line item what this study official researchers studied to look at within the context of a study the information of which was given to an, uh, some federal agency in our case for the United States of America that was allowing these things and they were faulty they're faulty in ways that I don't read the studies I don't know all the details here but here we have someone that gives us the clue what is to be included in a study that's not, that if you, again, the silence of it in the study, if you didn't know it needed to be there, you didn't realize the study w doesn't really say what it's supposed to say. So let me read through some of this and see if we can get some flavor on, even if we didn't know these things were there, we have someone telling us, and whether or not when you hear these things, the same modus operandi is used in other, other areas that we can apply the same measure in other things, let's say of our health, you know, just strictly on the health, like let's say 5G or any other medication or any other medicine or any standard that the agencies would be applying or a locality, you live in a county, they want to bring up some health issue. And this starts to work out real importantly when you start listening to this darn coronavirus promotion 
on having, being able to jump in when they start making the wrong statements of they say they can prove it and then you can come back like I was reading from some of the things that John Rappaport says that they don't test for, they need to test for before they can say what they can in order to impose this medical martial law on you or this profit-making condition that the corporations allow are allowed to do that becomes so formidable against your no, your self-responsibility, your responsibility to yourself and, and others around you. You attempting to be that sovereign where you think you need a lodial title in the context of man. No, you just create it outside the government, essentially. you This is a, a, very connected to the presumption of innocence, folks. I guess why, it, I mean, I why I focus on that a little bit. See, the king could do no wrong if you connected that up too. Uh, anyway, so here we are. Let me read this because I find it interesting. The things that are omitted, again, the omissions are, they're felony, folks, when they come after you, uh, when your rights to say no. If you knew that, you could produce felonies everywhere that the government starts imposing anything. If you did it in sufficient numbers, then that wouldn't, I don't think we'd be seeing the day that we're seeing here. Let me, let me uh, do the title again. Uh, the new study explains why it's uncertain if the HPV vaccine even prevents cervical cancer. The facts, a new study raises concerns and questions about the effectiveness of the HPV and if it really plays any role at all in preventing cervical cancer. Reflect on, are vaccines as effective as they're marketed to be? This isn't even a safety question here. This is the effectiveness of what they're telling us they're promoting to an agency is. This is not just HPV. This is all pharmaceuticals. This is all remedies for uh, the ills of man. This is affecting, this is a, applied in climate change type things, in carbon uh, red legislation. It, this actually starts, if you start looking, it applies even to your so-called 2A right, or the Second Amendment rights. This is all the way this thing works out. This is all from the same source that these people looked in and said, yeah, these people that made the studies didn't include the the sci actual science. They were focused on other things, and they created omissions of data, which allowed their data to be best science and approvable. A new study published by the Royal Society of Medicine is one of the med med multiple studies over the years that has emerged questioning the efficacy of HPV vaccine. Again, replace HPV vaccine not with, oh, and a rolled eyes and I'm going to click off. Replace HPV vaccine with anything that gets agency approval or government sanction. Uh, you, and you'll f just understand that there's multiple studies in any of those subject matters that, will, that are written in the same om similar omissions for their subject matter. And we're going to hear how they do it here in this uh, medical condition relative to this HPV vaccine. The researchers conducted an appraisal of public phase two and phase three efficacy trials in relation to the prevention of cervical cancer, and their analysis showed, quote, the trials themselves generated significant uncertainties undermining claims of efficacy in the data they used. And so, again, I, I interject. I used to do more of this interjection. I didn't know if it was any good. I stopped, but I got to do it here. The data is all important. This is technocracy. This is surveillance. This is monitoring. The acquisition of data is all important. And then it's the mistreatment. You know, you hear about who he who, it's not him who votes, but he who counts the votes. Very similar, very similar application here. They're saying when you looked at the uh, data, it was cherry. Here's, they cooked the books. They cherry picked. How, however you want to use the euphemism. It's fraud, essentially. Uh, the researchers emphasize that it is still uncertain whether a, a human papillomavirus, HPV, vaccination prevents cervical cancer as trials were not designed to detect this outcome, which takes decades to develop. The researchers point out that the trials used to test the vaccine may have overestimated the efficacy of the vaccine. And so here we, we apply that, that they're utilizing just the fact it would take decades to develop if a pharmaceutical company or the agency accepted the efficacy rules that didn't go through 10 years and they wanted a, a pharmaceutical accepted. If you weren't there to say, wait a minute, you can't do that. It takes at least 10 years to get that answer. What they're giving you is fraud. You can't use that. 
if you were there to write that comment and be there to stop this when if they tried to go forward, this, all this harm that they've been allowed to put on it starts to, it slowly starts to shed, like the vaccine <laughs> does. But in the proper way, it sheds from our life. If you're there to witness the crime, it can't last long. Unless, again, and there's always this caveat, unless you're dealing with a criminal conspiracy, then you out that as well. And that's part of this, how easy it is actually to make your own snowball and kick it over the side and watch it grow. So here's the fascinating. Did we know that they don't even do the decades-long testing? If that went to an agency, there's no way that an efficacy, if you had said that in a comment, it takes 10 years to come up with these efficacy uh, standards relative to this cancer, and maybe longer. How could they have one that's not fraud? In fact, you'd assert that it was. A part of the problem that the, uh, the report goes on, as the study points out, it's that it's unknown as to whether certain infections would clear or would persist and lead to cervical changes. This is a big point. Remember, we're talking a virus, like any other virus that causes sickness. This is just another virus that causes something that causes lesions, that causes the malformation, which moves into cancer. Many steps in the process here. And so if you apply this to anything else you see as regulatory administration of your life, you start saying, where was the first point? Well, the first point was, this is not just cancer. This has multiple steps. And we don't even know if we have an infection. Boy, doesn't that speak, hearken to John Rappaport's focus on, well, they don't even know that there's the affection. They just have the, what do they have that they talk about? The effect, the symptoms. This is a serious, this report here was, as I read it, was a serious confirmation of the, uh, of the problem that we just look past. The silence, the deafening silence that's given to us as fact in the omission and the harm that comes on us that's under color of the law of authority within the jurisdiction having allow, allowance to do it. So this is a big point, that they don't even know about the infections, let alone that they would clear, let alone that they did anything that would cause the next generation of the problem. Every year, around approximately 13.1 in every 100,000 women are diagnosed with cervical cancer. So the rate of incidence is quite low. Furthermore, the vaccinations is offered to two girls aged 9 to 13, as the study points out, quote, before sexual debut and naive to HPV infection. Infection, right? Not cancer. Uh, this is just the beginning parts, and they're not even sure of this. The study reviewed 35 published papers relating to 12 randomized, blinded, non-HPV vaccine-controlled phase 2 and 3 trials of Gardasil and uh, Surfarex, Conducted from 2001 to 2016, assessing uh, efficacy against cervical cancer and its precursors. So, I guess we could say this is a small study, but it's still looking over studies over studies, and it's looking at whether these studies themselves were set up properly. Right? So, did you know to do that? Okay, if we didn't, now we do know. And we're looking at someone who's doing it and how they do it. And the heading here then says, no evidence of HPV vaccine prevents cervical cancer. The quote, the, the article goes on, the, the emphasize, the emphasize, they emphasize after their examination that none of the trials they examined were actually designed to determine efficacy or effectiveness of the HPV vaccine against cervical cancer. In fact, there was no reported case of cervical cancer in any of the trials. Now they go on, I'm, I won't read it or insert, you can do that. I just want to go to the points here of how you extract from this report what the gov corporations do on what they omit that needs to be included uh, that the studies don't even say that the agencies accept because the corporations have given the authority to tell them because everyone's presumed innocent, even the corporation. And there's no morality in those corporations but the bottom line, and so they take great license in that. It takes uh, someone to witness the crime to stop it. The authors point out that it was even questionable whether or not the vaccine prevents precancerous lesions. So what did I say? You start at the beginning in the foundation. We're three steps, de three steps down the, the journey bef before we should be here. 
Right. I said outcomes before. See, that's what they're on. They're outcome based. That's best science is going to tell us what they want as an outcome, not the reality. One, this reminded me of the fact that the vaccines came on at the time that people, mankind, uh, immunities were building against lots of viruses. And uh, the vaccine companies and pharmacology took a, a tailcoat hang on to the natural res immunity means being built up in people relative to the, what they, they were claiming for vaccines, where we hear HPV infec infections often clear on their own. I, I didn't, hadn't even heard that that would that that was even part of the equation, but here here it is. Like any virus infection, they can clear. We're two steps back here. Remember, we're not into the cancer even yet. But one issue is that the cervical cancer takes many years to develop. We're back to now. Can they do efficacy in just uh, a couple of months? Absolutely not. And here's another pr secondary proof that the uh, the cancer itself. Not an infection to lesions to cancer. The cancer take, it takes this whole process. Out of uh, all of women who get an HPV infection, approximately 70% of those are going to clear that infection all by themselves. Just like mankind was developing immunities to all these viruses all by their natural self. And yet the virus vaccine companies came in and on the coattails of that natural resistance and immunity built in, to nature's attacks, as it does, the it looks like they're doing something when in fact they're not doing anything, maybe even causing more harm, and none of that's ever checked out, and we would see why. I mean, that would be bad for their bottom line, their greed. The body will take care of, its, uh, care of it, and you don't even have to detect it within two years of infection. Approximately 90% of the women will be will have cleared that HPV infection with no help. Now we're now we're starting to tread very carefully on what your your diet, aren't we? On your health, on what you take in. And a lot of this is handled through good uh, sufficient nutrition, which we find governmental standards to be woefully inadequate to, to support. As I was explaining, uh, fascinated how much iodine you actually need in your system. And what it actually, how how well it works once you have enough. It's certainly so so much smaller than what they tell you by the government is. Again, you could agree what they're trying to do is they're trying to stop one problem, but they're not telling you what health is. They're telling you the minimum you get away with for not getting a certain type of illness, which is pervasive in the in the deficiency. The body will take care of it, folks. So here we have if you keep your body up. As I've told you with the coronavirus, make environment in your body that the coronavirus doesn't like. It can't stand. It'll die. It'll just go away. If not, then you're going to suffer whatever whatever deficiencies your system has, and everybody's different, so it can't be a pre predictable. So within two years, this thing may actually this virus clears up. This flu symptoms clears up. Now by by their by three years, half of the remaining 10% will have progressed into a, a CIN 2-3 lesion and precancerous precancerous lesion. 10% of the total after three years. So approximately 5% of the original 100% of the women with an HPV infection will develop into a precancerous lesion. So now you have the small group of women who now have precancerous lesions. So now let's look at those moving into the actual cancer. What we know is that amongst the women with CIN3 lesions, which is a little more than severe than, than CIN2 lesions, it takes five years for approximately 20% of those to develop into cancer if they do. Furthermore, it takes about 30 years for 40% of them to become cancer. The information above is why the multiple studies have questioned the administration of the HPV vaccine. In a study published in Autoimmunity Reviews, the authors note that, quote, the decision to vaccinate with HPV vaccine is a personal decision, not one that must be made from public health. HPV is not a lethal disease in 95% of the infections, and the other 5% are detectable and treatable in the precancerous state. So one must ask themselves, what are the chances of a 9 to 13 year old girl getting an HPV infection? 
and what are the chances of that infection clearing itself. Furthermore, the vaccine also provides 5 to 10 years immunity, so when the 9-year-old reaches the age of 19 or perhaps sooner, the immunity they've received from a few or out of many types of HPV infections is no longer there. There are more than 100 HPV infections, and only 12 of them are carcinogenic to humans. Again, we're not reading this for the news. We're reading it for the points of departure from doing real science and real study and real understanding of a condition. I'm telling you as I read this, I see the elements of those points applicable to other subject matters. You just have to put the subject matter context in place of what they're looking, they're finding here. You go through the, in this case, the chronology of the infection stages, and you find out you're talking about many years out. None of the studies ever do that, to find that out, do they? And yet they'll turn around and say they're effective and then imply they're safe notwithstanding the data sheet that in lots of cases says you can die. And as long as you're not there witnessing this and then making record for it in all the places in life I see, why we all complain and why we see the problem in the world, we've allowed all this on us in part that we can, as I've found, we can start, we stop this pretty much in its tracks. Furthermore, it goes on here, the idea that HPV vaccine helps prevent cervical cancer, according to this recent study, is not a correct assumption. So one must ask themselves, why is it marketed in that manner? Cooperation from other studies, headline here. Again, the main study of discussion is in this article is complemented by many others that emphasize the same thing. For example, a study published in 2013, a current pharmaceutical design carried out a review of HPV vaccine pre- and post-licensure trials to assess the evidence of their effectiveness and the safety found that HPV vaccine clinical trials design and data interpretation of both efficacy and safety outcomes were largely inadequate. Now, how much, I'm going to interject, how much more simple is it than to just pull this out? You've got now multiple witnesses to the same problem and go over to some place that you feel strongly about vaccines and apply this very same thing to the studies and show that the studies that were handed were fraud, and here's why. These elements that you see in this report here, it seems to be a pretty simple approach, more than having to be an expert in the field, so to speak, where you understand the rules are in balance to do certain things, and you work inside there. Instead of you trying to prove out something, you just show they didn't meet the obligations or an agency didn't actually meet what it ought to have done, which was required in the black and white, which I say you got to go read. So let me go on and say, additionally, we note evidence of selective reporting of results from clinical trials, i.e. exclusion of vaccine efficacy figures related to study subgroups in which efficacy might be lower or even negative from peer-reviewed publications cherry-picking information, cooking the books. It's right, okay, so there's a people that understand this stuff. You don't have to understand it now. You can just go to these multiple studies, find the multiple studies in your respective uh, subject matter area that you see a harm going on and you want to stop, and you start bringing up the counter to what is assumed by the agency without evidence of it. Assumed to be correct without evidence to the contrary of that. HPV vaccines' long-term benefits appear to rest on a number of unproven assumptions. Not even presumptions here, folks. Or such, they don't have the, again, the presumption of the law that they're right. They don't even work on a presumption that way. These are just completely failed. Or such which are at odds with factual evidence and significant misinterpretation of, a, of available data. This is just best science, folks. This definition right here, that's the definition of best science. It's BS. BS, best science is a term. It's not science. It's a standard of, a, of fraud that they've allowed themselves in, to use. It's BS. And so you see it's cherry-picked information to do what? The outcome. To what? A solution, right? This is all consensus-built nonsense, crime, essentially. It's what I speak to. It's one of the things I've identified for a decade or more now is up against us, one of our oppressions. It is the government, essentially. For uh, going on, for example, the claim uh, that HPV vaccine will result in approximately 70% reduction in cervical cancers is made despite the fact that clinical da trials data 
has not demonstrated to date that the vaccines have actually prevented a single case of cervical cancer, let alone cervical cancer death, nor that the currently overly optimistic surrogate marker-based extrapolations are justified. Likewise, the notion that HPV vaccines have any impressive safety profile is only supported by highly flawed design of safety trials and is tr contrary to accumulating evidence that uh, from vaccine safety surveillance databases. <laughs> you think the government's a vaccine court? A court case reports, there it is, which continue to link HPV vaccine to serious adverse outcomes, including death and permanent disabilities. See, that's the data sheet. We'll tell you it's safe except for this data sheet that says death. And I've said this over and over. Read the product data sheet. Whatever name they want to put on that little little insert that's now becoming an encyclopedia of its of exceptions and noted dis disclaimers uh, as we as we move through the years. Uh, the uh, report of this, the study statement goes on to say within this article, we thus conclude the further reduction of cervical cancers might be best achieved by optimizing cervical screening which carries no risks and targeting other factors of the disease rather than by reliance on vaccines with questionable efficacy and sta safety profiles. And for this, my mind just turns to this, well, this like the HPV test. Remember, the data sheet said the test wasn't really a test. The test was a subjective clinical diagnosis, which what? Looked for flu symptoms. And so we see built into these disclaimers that it's an illusion. All of it's an illusion. They get the license to do using assumptions that the government's granted them the presumption of innocence on, but they're criminals. And it takes a witness uh, against it now. Like I, again, I, I haven't made this uh, made this the rule. This is just how we're being taken down. And, I, and again, I hear crickets at every turn. And then I, he, I see complete just dysfunction at the, at the uh, at even attempting to approach how to resolve uh, a problem yeah, so i'm reading i'm i'm looking i'm getting tired of reading at some point this is really something that uh, again i don't like all the reading i've just done but uh, to me it's important to go back to the basics of the foundation find the first step and find out whether or not you can identify what you're being told is a lie and it's very hard to identify that when you're in, information, important information withheld or our ignorance of what is required. This was, to me, reading out of the, out of the uh, sustainable handbook at some point. It, it's not a, not a, dis, there's nothing new under the sun here, but what's new is a, how we uh, can read how ignorant we are, what, if we're looking at all. A lot of times we don't even look, this is the other problem. But if we're looking, we may miss a, a whole lot of things. And again, it's written that way. It's written to be confusing. But when you are interested to not have, you know, if you're on a anti-vax, what we considered anti-vax, to me, looking at this report and bringing that into your your weaponry instead of just the mass response and, and pleading, you actually bring the failure of these things forward what we found, like we went up against the sage grouse, and we found out the actual science showed that a raven is the actual destroyer of sage grouse, and we also found fraud in the in the agency's acceptance. That was all it took to shut that whole thing down. We didn't have to go through all this effort to try and prove anything. We just showed that the standard was faulty, that it wasn't cur the the information, the data derived was cherry picked in a way to come up with that because that's what they wanted that's what the agency wanted and then there was fraud within the agency itself and that thing went away for a couple of years and then it, i've noticed that they're starting it hasn't done anything but they it started to foam in again they really need these they really need to pull these uh, lies out and make it look like science is doing it in fact there's no science at all uh the, another thing going on now be here we have the vaccines and remember we're hearing the, immediately they want to do vaccines against this coronavirus, which if it happens again is just going to be one of those seasonal flus, right? Yeah, if, if you, I hope you picked that up too. We've been talking a little bit about this NCO virus in 2019. The 
there's inf information that there's been some cutting and splicing in this, so it can't be natural either. And I'm not, it doesn't matter to me going one, one way or the other. I just want to focus you on the coronavirus is still a thing. The, the targeting that's going on, it's never yet been made a pandemic. The charts are starting to show we went through the, we're now on the bottom line for as bad as it's sounding in China. And I've been even using numbers that still dwarfed what they're saying, even even what they're claiming is underreporting. I use numbers may, way greater to show you that even if it reached the way greater numbers, they're not. They still don't match a serious uh, problem. The question of their origins is very serious. Why? Because I told you, with a haystack of misinformation or just news and promotion, there's a, there may be a needle that can get you that you really have to watch out for. And so there's a here on the origins of the 20. 19 COV virus I got, you know, they want to make vaccines, these same vaccines that they do, we don't, they don't do the efficacy standards right, they don't do the safety right. If you had that list of the prior one, you can look at what's coming for this other uh, 2009 COV, which will become, if it happens again, on any large scale, becomes a seasonal flu, which the WHO, not the rock group, not the owl, but the World Health Organization, will kick to the curb because it's seasonal now, not novel. Now understand that problem. The problem is, is, the question is, was it constructed? Is it, I say it, it novel means that they made it. That's the terms that are in the United States law relative to what novel is in legal, and it means patent, it means it's been created. I'm not going to move from there. My problem is, is who are they going to affect it with and what was for the purpose? That's the, that's the needle in that haystack. So that's important to keep a track of, but I'm not going to lose my mind over this stuff, and I haven't. But uh, it is important to find out how this thing works. Someone's trying to analyze the origins of this 2009 NCOV because it's important. Can we identify that it was? A, it's actually a, is it a military weapon? Is it, or is it just a consequence of bad hygiene over there and the acceptance of it in China? Or even different, is it that because of the ongoing pollution, folks? I've been just fascinated. All the drone shots of China. And the shutting down of that place and the lack of the ghost town they want to keep telling us it is. And you look in the sky and it's still got smog. Can't be a good thing. And there's still people sick. Yeah, but anyway, I have a, a listing here. If you're going to make a vaccine on certain something, you find out now the failures of what the study group, now these people that studied it show that these studies that are done for the efficacy or safety are not meant actually for those things at all. They are for the outcome to move moved through BS, best science, BS, not just science, but this thing that they've invented uh, to make it work and be the so-called solution. That there's a, uh, starting this story was interesting because it says recombinant, recombination technology has been in the in uh, molecular virology since 1980s. The structure of the 2019 NCOV virus genome provides a very strong clue as to the likely origin of the virus. So this is very important. This is like possibly tracking down the needle. How to identify the needle before it gets you. And this article is important. It goes through how you, they're going to analyze, and I think this is important to listen, what the potentials are that they're analyzing for, the potential of it actually being the point. They go through these options. I thought the list was important because it, you, you can see how you have to take down a condition to decide is it possible or not. And this is kind of what I tell you about possibilities and probabilities and making categories. And you line them all up and then you prioritize all these things. And then you come to a solution for yourself, your own answer, that takes into account the broad spectrum but focuses mainly on the most probable and most likely. Whether you're going to take action or just keep your eye on something, then you can eliminate a lot of the work. Option number one, natural coronavirus related to bat coronaviruses, not a recombined virus. The evidence of this was a pylogenic clustering of, bat, uh, of the bat coronavirus. Evidence acceptance, low bootstrap support, N equals 75, and the presence of INS 1378. Status, falsified hypothesis. The test, survey coronavirus in animals in the wild. Goes through a little list on if you think this is the case, then this is what it, uh, this is the option of the actual evidence that there is available or not, and how you're going to test for it. I thought it was interesting to present to you because this is how you go through to qualify whether or not something's a danger to you, where you might want to keep your eye, 
I don't know if you've done any hunting, but there's a you keep you got to keep your eyes open when you're looking for something. If you want to eat that night, you kind of don't blink, and you're looking for just the slightest change in what is a nature that wants to be camouflaged in its own, in its environment. And so you're looking for that little telltale sign that there's something that's not. It's what you're after. It's in this case, it's it's a Sasquatch. It's going to come get you if it finds you there too. And so you want to be able to identify that in the wild. Now, it's all coming out, too, that this stuff is aerosolized, which that's not a question. But now there's been promotion that it aerosolizes and it can travel. And this is an unsupported report, but it can travel up 13 kilometers. And they're trying to explain why it is. The problem The problem with that is, is why, and they're fogging as well. The fogging is in the ground, this viral viricide, I suppose. It doesn't get up into the atmosphere that's all completely fogged in and smogged out. Uh, they, again, they, if that's the case, and the aerosolization actually may protect you because your mask, it has to be a bigger particle, your mask may protect you there. It doesn't add up to being able to be this virolo- virological thing that goes and takes over the world. This is a problem in China, and for whatever reason, however they've handled it, they've had to come to terms with it, the charts of the creation of which, the infection of which has actually turned down here in the last couple of days. But uh, what caused it? Where did this thing come from? A recombine, option two, a recombined virus that naturally picked up uh, on a SARS-like a spike protein in the N-terminus 3 end of the viral genome. Evidence, the INS-1378 codon basis, similar to the snake's dollar sign. Evidence against insufficient match in the database search to other uh, COV Spike protein status, speculative hypothesis, unlikely. Test, find the isolate that matches the C- T- uh, 2019 NCOV in the wild and reproducibility independently isolate the virus from the wild and then match will confer- confirm. He goes on to another option, a recombined virus made in a laboratory for the purpose of creating a bioweapon. And then he goes through a large discussion here. And so I would, this is where I say get on the, get, if you're interested in, What's going on, what the labs are doing, and who's involved in all this as well on a global scale, and where they might be. You really need to see what the report was that brings this into potential. And the only thing they come up with that as a bioweapon was it's a rumor, but we have to look at the next option that a recombined virus made in laboratory for the purpose of creating a vaccine. So now they go from bioweapon to vaccine. We know that's what the object is, and this uh, uh, ultimately, that's what they tell us. Uh, I wouldn't, even though it's a rumor, and I've reported that it certainly must be an idea relative to Kanukistan Ken- Ken- scientists giving certain things over to China, and the question of what Wuhan does relative to everyone saying it's not supposed to be bioweapons, bio but it looks like every one of them will do that. Uh, that certainly sits there uh, pervasive. It's still a rumor. But the uh, admitted thing that does is that they're done for vaccines. And this fourth option becomes a little more poignant. And they actually use that INS 1378 codon that is part of the patenting process that uh, uses a particular type of uh, process to make it. And so these elements are all here. It goes through a much farther extension on all this that goes on and you read through and his assessment of this is that this would be the most likely what it is and the test would that be that the nucleotide sequence of all laboratory types of coronavirus being made, being studied in China would confirm this and so there's a way to prove this so what's your silence the silence is that they're not actually testing for this or being open with that testing and so this author believes it's likely uh, this was a vaccine derived, and that's novel. See, we're back to what the WHO and Gates and the, all those people want to do in the test of all this on a global scale. That it, I think it could be as co co weaponry, bioweapon in the context of an environmental, excuse me, an economic hit of China as well. And so big dynamics start to happen w- with this. I'm still looking at the fact that vaccine oriented. They're doing these. Remember, this is a new RNA-style vaccine that's never been shown or tested safe at all, never really been tested on people, that they're trying to push forward. This new RNA, remember, uh, we've also heard that in the RNA, they also have the DNA digital 
digitizing of data in DNA. And I think Microsoft was involved in, in those. I can't remember that story, but I think so. Uh, this now becomes the new vaccine where they can actually tar they can actually code information into these vaccines. And so there's a whole lot more here that looks like this was actually the novel vaccine related invented coronavirus that has a future. Uh, this is just one of the iterations. It's not it's not the end all be all. This is just the moving forward of this whole thing. So keep track of that for y'all as we listen to before. The studies, when you look at what they're supposed to do, never did what they said that they did, but agencies like the FDA accept them. And my experience is in relative to public lands and all these other agencies on that side, they accept them as as assumptions of valid input. Even the courts did. You heard that the Ninth Circuit accepted all this nonsense that was put into the court record, district court, as as proof is what you're looking at in these vaccines as they move the future they want against what I what I see is against you, any one of you, and you sense that and you complain about it and all that, but you you throw it away because it's just too much work. Uh, we're, uh, I don't know what a, how much work you think you can put into a war. Uh, how much little work you can put into a war. I don't know what, what your thoughts are there. That makes no sense to me. If you have any thoughts, uh, real thoughts in your brain. This is not, uh, This they tell us this because it's going on. Uh, people are dying because it's going on. I also notice uh, conspicuously present is the death of males, Asian males in this. Okay? So this has another whole other thing that could be and if they're looking at you're looking at genotypes by ethnic by race of people, which I find funny anyway, but we're all people, we're all mankind. But at any rate, they've found distinctions. This looks like it's targeting male uh, Asians, and uh, that would be good for China because they have too many males, don't they? So that sits there as a potential impossibility. So do we get all fired up? I told you they haven't declared it a pandemic. I told you what the script would have to say. They can't yet. It looks like all the, sky, the things are turning down. It looks like it's just a coronavirus like any other flu. And once this goes through this season, it's likely going to be a routine, and then it won't be on the list no more because it's only novel, the ones that they promote for their new vaccines that they want to push down your throat underneath the, the terror provision. We have a report here uh, that even uh, the people that are outside of Asia – uh, that a Brit first to contact coronavirus refused drugs and beat infection with hot whiskey and honey. Excuse me, he didn't. He was over there. He didn't come to Britain. A Brit first to contract coronavirus refused drugs and beat the infection with hot whiskey and honey. And I read that title and said, yeah, it's the flu. Interestingly, he's not Asian. And he's probably pretty strong. And so he was able to fight it off. But if you can cure the coronavirus with hot whiskey and honey, maybe it's not as promoted. And I guess that's all I want to point out there. You start looking around with what this thing does, and you look at what they claim that they need vaccines for. Like you've heard in the in HPV, they don't even show the precancerous lesions. They don't even show how the infection wasn't there. They just make this claim in tests, and you think it's a study, and you think it's the truth. And when you look at the evidence, the evidence is that this thing can be cured with a glass of hot whiskey and honey. Can't be the so the the terror that this coronavirus is being promoted. And maybe we have other options. And then uh, weeks ago, came through, and I think Gary L. put this through, but the terror, a, a teacher, here's how you do the experiment. Remember, they do studies. You can do studies too, folks. A teacher did an experiment to show the power of hand washing, and you can't stay unimpressed. And this is exactly... What I was telling you, hygiene, folks, keep your hands clean, quit touching your nose and your face, quit poking your eye, uh, keep a distance, isolate yourself a bit, don't engage. doesn't mean there's a guarantee. It highly limits the, con uh, the, the vector, doesn't it, when you see these pictures and a piece of bread that was wiped on a Chromebook or a piece of bread that was pulled out and stuck in a plastic bag that wasn't wiped on anything. Or unwashed hands that touched a piece of bread put in a plastic bag. Or soap and water. Or hand sanitizer. And the pictures 
are the are the proof, folks. If you ever get this, hope you get this link. You can see it for yourself. You can do your own tests. I've said, wash your hands, and you will see proof of uh, interesting. What's on a Chromebook is pretty disgusting. What's on the kids' little dirty fingers when they touch their uh, food, when they touch this post of bread? What grew on that loaf of on that piece of slice of bread was pretty disgusting. What the article points out is that what's pretty disgusting too is hand sanitizer didn't keep that loaf of bread clean. Uh, so we're being told a bunch of nonsense on the hand sanitizer as well if you relied on all that. And yet, soap and water shows no more mold than a clean, fresh, and untouched piece of bread. Zero mold and disease and colors and whatever all else. Uh, just what you'd want to know if you want to help keep yourself healthy and from coronavirus or any other flu or any other nastiness. And so a hot whiskey and a honey and hand washing can uh, keep things cleared up. Maybe we don't need the BS, best science that they're pushing down our throat. And maybe that is an offer alternative that you make for anyone. Have they ever done that test? Or either one of them. Whiskey and honey versus not, and versus whatever other things that they want to do. Or have they done, how about just clean your hands? How many people that just clean their hands uh, were sick? And or if they got sick, how deep was the sickness and of what? Uh, then did they take a control group on what would be your your natural intake of nutrition to keep you healthy? Has they, anybody ever done that test? I don't know if I've ever heard of one. I guess there could be out there. I don't know everything. But again, this is what we told. And this is what we tend to lend to give over to people. And here's the examples of what you could use in my mind that they aren't doing these tests. They aren't showing that these are the control systems and that what to try and find what? The real vector, the real cause. No, they want to push that it's this thing that science can sell you instead of finding that the in industry might be causing the problem or just your cultural agreement to being unsanitary and unhygienic is possibly the cause. And so when you when you tie all this together, the, the deception and the omission of these things is how they're bringing on all the woe on you that you complain about. In any, I mean, in any number of things, I hear people complain about all kinds of stuff, and I'm thinking, well, that's just a subject matter that the answer, at least the addressment of it, would start in an area that nobody understands to do. Whether I'm looking at health or taxes or public land matters or whatever, they're just no one looks really in the right spot. No one looks to see what's accepted as so that just isn't. It just isn't, and then. No, no further information. No one goes to the further information to at least lay that out. And I say at least lay it out because so many people are so stuck in what they don't know is right that isn't that they will not even listen to the education that they need to hear. And that that's a whole different dynamic. And that's how you talk about being dumbed down. Wow. I mean, that's a it's not just dumbed down, folks. We're we're really set in our ways as a society and not in good way, not in a good direction. Not in a good direction at all. And that tends to let us agree with really the worst amongst us that looks like they're the leader. You know, I'm back to thinking real quick here about the microcosm of the minor is the macrocosm of, of America. You've got bunches and bunches and bunches of miners that listen to the wrong information, won't lift a finger for themselves to learn the most basic information to do the right thing. The most basic right thing. It's not a lot of work. But we would rather complain Oh boy, they're they're paying through the nose for a bunch of uh, illicit protection representation as well. And I find all the money spent on the wrong direction is really kind of a, an irritation to me as well, as I have to ask you all for a, a buck, uh, two bucks, three bucks to, to solve the problem for a server that needs to be paid for. It, okay, see, I get irritated a little bit. But anyway, moving on, uh, along the lines of uh, what this ad sustainable agenda across the world is, I, if you haven't, if you didn't think about it, I'm talking about that today, even though I'm not really talking about it. It's because that's the plan that we're up against, and that keeps stepping into our face and on our feet or in our nose or down our throats, in our lungs, 
perpetually, it seems, and no one seems to be aware to identify it or to stop it. Uh, that this guy comes up is very interesting uh, in my mind. Uh, that this came up now is very interesting as well politically. But it says, it acknowledges how global this problem is. We hear Michael Bloomberg receives an honorary knighthood. Michael Bloomberg, who has uh, claimed uh, or at least asserted he may become running for the President of the United States, has an honorary knighthood from the Queen. And if you don't think the Queen has influence, then the people are accepting of it. And that Bloomberg is not an American. Now, I said that and I paused. What do you think? Yeah or no? Have you looked at what he does? Can you can you point out all the things that make him commit that where he's committing treason? He's again he's one of the main uh, protagonists it seems in Virginia, uh, allow him getting the politics to change there by his influence and the money that people will grab onto to move and propel themselves in order to get a majority political majority to out throw the posterity and they're clueless on how to do much of anything but make up fairy tales, it seems. Michael Bloomberg receives an honorary knighthood. Hmm, very interesting. There will be presentation according to our source, but the amount of pomp and circumstance is usually up to the awardee. The former mayor can now officially add KBE to his signature, but Sir Bloomberg, is he is not. That title is reserved for British citizens. The official ceremony of a small formal affair from friends and family at the Bloomberg, at which Bloomberg will receive the KBE insignia, will most likely be held in the next few months, six, three to six months in Washington or New York. Uh, Peter Westmacott, the British ambassador to the United States, not Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth, will be presiding. So this is an act of state. It's not so honorary in that regard, I'll tell you. The UK honors system, honors system recognizes exceptional achievement in service to the nation and includes non-British nationals who receive honorary awards for their important contributions to British interests, read the statement released by the British Embassy in Washington. While Mayor uh, of the New York Bloomberg, the while Mayor of New York Bloomberg, the $35,000 dollar, dollar $35 billion dollar media mogul, backed a tourism partnership between the Big Apple and London. Bloomberg LP employee op European operations have been headquartered in London since 1987. Remember, tourism is going to replace all your production. That's a sustainable thing. The crown's up with that. It's up with promoting and bringing an honorary state action upon someone who wants to be the President of the United States, who, and whom, if you look around, is doing nothing but subverting uh, the things of the trust is, as the government was established. Taking the establishment within the documents, and, or the titles, uh, you see the, like you see a patent, the ultimate evidence of what is supposed to happen, and completely ignoring any of it. And everybody's okay with it. No, no, you complain and you rally up and all, but no, you're, you're not really acting against it. But he's actually considered for the post of the President of the United States. I think he's also a dual citizen. And so here we go, and that's where we go, and that's how far it's going to get, because none of you all step up and start to denounce all this stuff in any way. I'm still flabbergasted that the impeachment got any legs at all. My disappointment was that Trump didn't become pro se and show how the justice system was screwed up by becoming pro se and showing that it's possible, and how, and extending this whole thing down past the election, and it just brutalizing anybody who, who made that thing an issue. But they didn't do it that way. And he wasn't meant there to be doing that either. This is all just to show. Why people continue to be interested is, is, is an interest to me a bit, because it just means how far down the path of a perdition that we are. And we may not get back to that narrow path of what we need to do. You notice, though, technically was interesting. That was another thing I did find interesting. How would they respond? Now, I had my druthers on how they would do it, because I have another thing about the judiciary in this country that's corrupted and completely bad, and you all will agree to that. But, I mean, there's more fundamental ways to expose the 
treason that's going on in all that now relative to the Bar Association. But procedurally, did you notice then the complaint was, and I hope you all looked at this, in the trial, so-called at the Senate, there was a complaint that they wouldn't bring witnesses for, forward. Now, isn't that an example of the defense saying, well, why do we have to bring witnesses when there's actually no valid charge? Didn't you witness there exactly the fact that they didn't need to see more witnesses when they looked at the charges, and although it was said it was an acquittal, there was actually no even the pretense of a legislative trial. They actually were looking at, there was not actual valid charges in, either, in order to answer for which evidence needed to be produced, is an avoidance procedure. I was interested that they took that, and that was proper, actually. And all, all, all my desires to see a, a bigger dust-up of nonsense go on, the actual a action in the law, what they did, we, notwithstanding the question, the, the, the legislative is a, is a, is a trial, Senate, the Senate was a tri, uh, trial, or that the House was really the jury, and all that un, un, um, expression of what they think is going on there. The answer was the charges actually didn't rise up to have to bring evidence or have the re, a trial is what I tell you you do when you brought into, uh, you're commanded before somebody on a process of some sort, and you answer in avoidance. That's pre-plea remedy and avoidance. And this is when we get back to the beginning of the broadcast. This is that jurisdictional point. And you go into a judicial side of that in the establishment, they have to have a cause that's valid before you have to answer. And the answer to that is to say, but there's no valid cause. The decision of that of which, given that's the case, is to dismiss. And this, we heard it was a quit. They can make up any word they want because it's not a real trial. This is just a function of the condition of impeachment. But I hope you followed the procedural there. That was really more proper. You don't answer to something. You don't make an issue of something that's not properly formed. In a way, I kind of did that at the beginning of the broadcast. I cannot answer to an elodial application because that's not applicable to the creator. Now, getting past that and we move inside the man's law, yeah, okay, you have to have a power to control that. And then where do you stand relative to that relationship? It was no different than I thought I heard the impeachment kind of went, even though I didn't, I only saw little bits here and there. But the complaint that they weren't going to have, uh, I guess I caught the attention, what caught my attention was there was a complaint there was going to be no witnesses, even though there were plenty. I'm not, I'm not discussing the lunacy, the ludicrousness of all this. I'm just saying procedurally, relative to a trial, they didn't even need to go to the trial to have the witnesses if the charges weren't actually rising to a claim under which the authority was established, right? I hope I said that, I should, that, that came out pretty clear. You should be able to get that. That's what we're doing all the time. Are you answering into something that you don't have to? Are you making an issue out of something that doesn't have to be? And when you're not asserting the avoidance, aren't you really asking for trouble and or admitting that there's someone else that can say something? Are You you want to be talking a low deal relative to no other claim. Are you acting the sovereign? Are you performing as the sovereign? Or are you really trying to prove something and your ego jumps in the way and you lose even that presumption of innocence against the claim and you answer in by thinking you can prove something. Now, we have also the oppressor. That's a different function. So, it's a, I guess it's the way I say how you approach it. Where, does your, where do you drop in on the first step and then uh, objectively is that the first step? And I mentioned quite a few points here of how to identify today I mean, if someone looked at a study, they said they haven't even done the first step. They're like at step four. They're, quali they're answering to step four, and they can't. that doesn't function that way. And this, this study for the HPV, I took a lot of time to read, was saying this, these are the points of step three and two and one and then prior where you're supposed to be. We're supposed to find that we even have a problem. And so uh, maybe you, I don't know what you heard when I'm reading, and maybe you, you're interested in that information, but I'm not speaking really to the subject matter itself. I'm speaking to, are you listening to the process that goes through to qualify, learn and discern 
that's what's proper against you. In my view, my my experience has been in relative in some maybe narrow issues. If you have someone who believes they're an authority and you can kick them out of the juris, you can define their jurisdiction as separate from you, and you're innocent of any subjectness to it. Haven't you declared your, if you will, in a different term, yourself a lodial? But that's relative to a man's imp or women's imposition, isn't it? An establishment by man's law. That's not looking back, that's not uh, as to the creator of anything. And so, just a perspective, of where is where is first step? Where actually is it? And then where where is it relative to a status of some sort and an, a power? You know, I've tried to offer to you over and over and over how you really embrace this this innocent, this presumption of innocence, even even as a presumption, because that's even within man's law. And you hold on to that with both both hands, if you will, and you don't let someone divest you of it. You don't answer into their frauds. You don't answer into the even that they have a say if they don't have a say. And if you do this wrong, then you're just being a trespasser. You're being you're being reticent to, to do justice as well in, in some regard. So, again, it's, it's a, you really have to do the analysis of where is the first step. And then in case you're almost like looking where is before your first step. Why, why are you even having to go on the journey? Has that even been established? And I've talked to you today on a couple of ways on how other people in other subject matter, in, any, in the certain subject matters, have approached that. And I say that's evidence for you in multiple subject matter areas as applied in those particular places to say whether or not something is even worthy of acceptance. And that statement could be the whole witness against the crime against you and lots of other people. Now moving again, uh, continuing on, that this is in a sustainability construct, this best science for BS, this assumptions that are not, outside of law extensions that shouldn't be, that we allow. I found another interesting story, which I'm not actually interested in, and it's really not for me, us, actually, to say within the context of the established power. But what was stated in this in this report, uh, this, there's a short excerpt of it, was very interesting to me in, in what, it, what it's speaking to, again, the sustainable future that they want. New Way Forward Act. There's just an excerpt. There's a New Way Forward Act to show you what you're seeing uh, over in Europe and what you see, the as I've talked to you, A2030 was to just blow up countries and let them migrate to places and let them immigrate to places where they're going to cause trouble. And we're going to go ahead and make this uh, place uh, so diverse that you don't even have an identity or a culture to, to be appreciative of another. We're going to push this all together. And that these fu are still functioning in the system, notwithstanding what you hear uh, Trump saying about he doesn't care about carbon, I mean, it's not, a, it's a carbon taxation and climate change is all a big fraud. It's still working underneath the skin of it. The sustainability part's still there. It's what Bloomberg promotes. It's what the Queen promotes. It's what the Pope promotes. It's what all these people promote. And there's, it's what studies cover up that can be found with people that are studied in these things and you can help, they can help you. The New Way Forward Act is it happened to be an immigration system remake, as it's described here. The bill would entirely remake our immigration system with explicit purpose of ensuring that criminals are able to move here and settle here permanently with impunity. And that's what the opening paragraph is, pretty startling. The, the way it's explained is that the way the, that this is like, let me see, I'll read it. The new way forward is act act is the most radical single piece of legislation we've seen proposed in this country. It makes the Green New Deal look like the status quo. So there's your connection to sustainability. There's your connection to this problem that we have on us, the oppression. There's bills going through that are going to be implemented worse than the Green New Deal continuing. And uh, he goes on to say here, the document produced by Democrats to promote the bill says convictions should not lead to deportation. Article goes on to say, keep in mind, we're not talking about convictions for double parking. The bill tar targets felon con felony convictions, serious crimes that send you to prison for years. A press release from Representative G uh, Jesus Garcia de, uh, of, uh, of Illinois, Democrat, is explicit about this. Garcia brags that the bill will break 
the, quote, prison and deportation pipeline. How does the bill do that? Under current U.S. law, illegal U.S. immigrants can be deported if they commit any aggregated felony, aggravated felony, or a crime of moral turpitude, that is, a vile deprived act like molesting a child. Under the New Way Forward Act, quote, crimes and moral turpitude are eliminated entirely as justification for deportation, and the category of aggregated felony gets circumscribed too. And that is just as they connected before to the Green New Deal, is the Green New Deal, but in immigration. Again, different subject matter, similar fulfillment. The invasion of people that don't have your lifestyle in hand and don't have a accountability uh, it reflects the government itself anymore that we're letting in here that it's being stripped silently from you while you all argue with me or we argue amongst ourselves or you argue with your neighbor or whatever. This stuff is going on and they're tearing down the, the borders, if you will, of what makes your life as stable as it is. We aren't enjoying a lot of that, uh, and uh, so I don't know what more to say. We're not stop at stopping that either. But here's one more element in the sustainability. This is something that Bloomberg d would would support and would also uh, got his honorary knighthood from the Queen over. And that, your connection through that is tourism, because sustainability says tourism replaces production. It also tourism replaces also your need to have private property, and that that private property should be done for the open spaces and landscape you can provide. And you, as if you have that property that you think is yours, you're going to be paying for those of us that want to come and visit. Is all this planned? This is one of the things that's under under shoot, is un, underpinning this whole entire thing. They invade your lands. This is what's happening in Europe with people that have a different type of culture. or laws, and this country, United States, is distinct in its land and property laws, folks. That's why I tell you, you want to get to a low deal, we're going to have to get inside a jurisdiction that, that honors it. Or, or that's not at least objectively so, notwithstanding the application of the, of the oppressors, the domestic enemies from within that are foreign, actually, when you look at them, as I've explained all this before and on. And so right in this news, on and on and on, I've been speaking about how they deceive you, how people objectively look at, real scientists look at stuff and see what, these things are set up for outcomes to the solution they want, which is lots of profit and lots of harm, because then they get to treat you with more of this lots of profit stuff. And yet your whole society, the laws that are coming, come more and worse as we keep not focusing on certain things. So here's a connection on how that's working. I find that pretty interesting. It's pretty scary in a way. Again, the, the immigration is not is for the United States federal government to do. They have the right to do that, but it has standards, and they're just ripping down all the restrictions, which do make for a healthy society when you do have people coming in. Why? Because their health, their sanitation, their cultures, their expectations, uh, uh, their history are totally different than than the, than the place that they're moving into. And there is an acclamation that has to happen. And there is a, a parody that needs to be made. I, I just, just bring this to your own house. How many people would you bring in, just invite everybody and his brother into your house, advertise it, and let anybody come in to do anything they want? That's not going to happen. I don't know of anybody that would do that. And if it did, it wouldn't last long. I've seen that happen or tried. You end up having to have to control a a place. I mean, this is the thing about having property. It, it comes with its own servitude. So you're not a low deal either when you have property. you got your own servitude built into that. Remember, as I've said, a property book told me, without property, there's no need for the law. You are lawless at the point of there's no property. So having your own property in yourself is at least a start. It's whether or not someone's going to recognize that. And that's another, that's another um, international law provision why you hear about it happening, especially with Israel. If, as soon as something happens in Israel, the United States is going to support it. They're attempting to provide for a, uh, an acquisition through acknowledgement. It can't exist for, for Israel, Israelis, but that's what they promote. And I don't want to get lost over in that. That is, that's another style of oppression that the, this country allows 
on on other people that I say it's a carnival mirror that allows it here. And this act, where they'll fence off people in other places of the world, they're going to let no borders be an invasion and allow the most heinous criminals in that you see going on in, in Europe. And, the, and apparently the Democrats are all up for that. And Bloomberg is getting an honorary notice of that's so cool with the gut with the uh, that kind of a, a tact, that sustainable tact is okay with the Queen too. So those of you in the UK, uh, take heed. One interesting thing I've told you though, you step up and get people to do something that you need to have done to start limiting this uh, this pressure we put on the world to show us that that's what they want in execution of things like A2030. That caused the strife in the Middle East to cause the immigration to the north and into Europe where you saw it's all about diminishment, austerity, and sustainable debt and how they're going to control your cultures and there is no distinction anymore. Uh, Congress votes to finally end 2020 war authorization in an attempt to stop conflict with Iran. Here we have the outcome of a stupidity in uh, Washington. The Democrats trying to impeach Trump because they can't, now they're going to try and stop him some other way, we might actually get out of it something that should have happened a long time ago, the end of the author war authorizations. Now, this says the 2002. I can't remember if the 2001 is still valid or not. I don't remember if they got rid of that one. But this is the 2002. They're supposedly voted out. There's still an, even another one, a different one, that's ad, adding, um, that's available, and I think it's the executive side that, the, that Trump gets to do. But here we have what should have been focused on, the stopping of the ability for the United States to make war and the funding of it. The core, as I wrote to someone on Twitter, some representative, I said, uh, I don't know what the comment was. They were, it was in the Senate. They were complaining about something. And I said, listen, stop, stop your nonsense. Just stop funding. Take the progeny of, of, the, of these Patriot Act and its progeny and eliminate them. Get rid of the reason why we continue to exploit, kill people, and then bring that upon us as a reflection. And so I, thought, I wanted to get that in on top. That's a subversion of this ability to go out into the world that we need to focus on and as best we can try to eliminate it. And so in the strife, the stupid political strife that's going on between Trump and the Democrats, this, these t types of things can happen. And so there's another thought on how to approach that. If you if you understand that, then you can jump on the Democrat side of the fence, and you can you can help push this type of stuff through if you're aware enough. If you're advanced enough in how you see how this works, you can plant the seed, which actually gets rid of stuff. It's kind of how another part of what uh, how I work in some regards and trying to move things forward. It's not that I take on the view; I just help the natural course of things. I make the suggestion for the natural course, and it just takes off because uh, someone has it in them to make it make it so, even though it's contrary to how you would do it or how it should be done naturally, or that it should even be there at all to be done. It is, so this is how you get rid of it. Grimmer, thank you for what you do at Real Liberty Media. I hope we get the donations. As serious folks, I may or may not be here last next week. It could very well be the very end. Thank you again to all you all that will donate. I uh, hope it's enough, and that's, that the, the, the thumbs up, the thumbs down, hopefully with comments, the redistribution of the broadcast, I appreciate all that, and I'll be with you next week, Tech Diffs or Nature Willie. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Whoop ass feels like. Son, 
You just opened a whole case of wolf mass. 